gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. This webinar is brought to you by Atara Solutions. My name is Grace Nzula. I am a trainer and HR consultant with Atara Solutions and a manager at Panessa Training Institute. Atara Solutions is an HR consulting firm and training firm uh, that provides total HR solutions to employers and employees. We also provide training services in HR, sales and soft skills. For more information, kindly uh, contact us through info at atarasolutions.co.ke. Get It Right with Atara Solutions is a platform that seeks to demystify issues to do with entrepreneurship and employment. We do this in partnership with Zalego Academy, a software development and capacity building academy. For those of you who are looking to polish or gain any IT skills or develop softwares or learn how to come up with your own websites, um, digital marketing, among other things, you can get in touch with them or visit their website or social media pages or better still write to eric at zalego.com. Again, I say eric at zalego.com for more details. Congratulations to our in winners in November. I think we have had a lot of fun last month. Oh yeah, I forgot to say happy new month, everyone. And a happy uh, World AIDS Day. So I hope you have gotten tested and you know your status. Anyway, back to our winners. So November, we had Monica Karanja, Jacinta Kisungi, and Joseph Wanjiro, and Christine, who won gift hampers from Soilex Pros of uh, Limited. We have Donna Karaoke, who won a cake from Capricio Pastries. Catherine and Charity Jerry, who won grocery packages from Good Fortune Greens. Evans Kiprotich and Joseph Karume, who won a gift hamper from Balcon Housing. In October, we had Whitney Joy and Lois Mongai, who won the offer from Sorel Laundry in Ruaka. Regina Mutuko, who won a gift hamper from Tanu's Kitchen, and Kabara Jane, who won a gift from Pal Radio. Whitney Joy, Catherine, and Kibara Jane, kindly reach out to me. And also, uh, Jacinta Kisungi, please reach out to me so that we can organize how you can collect your gifts. I know everyone else is making arrangements on how they can receive their packages. And we continue to celebrate their uh, life, and therefore, the giveaways are still up for grabs. In fact, today we have a lot of giveaways. I think about four or five people in our audience will walk away with something. So this is very, very exciting. You know, eh? Christmas mood is here. So uh, our partners in the month of October, were, I mean November, were Serenity Studios who are producing our videos. You can check them out on Instagram and Facebook. If you are an expectant mom and looking to do a photo shoot, uh, shoot please contact them. I love, 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 love their photo book. My God, it's beautiful. It's very, very well done. So they are doing such an amazing job. Check them out, Serenity Studios. We have Pal Radio, 96.9 FM in Nairobi, a Christian radio stations. They are also gifting our audience. That is 96.9 FM Pal Radio in Nairobi. We also have Good Fortune Greens, a, a green grocery shop based in Nanyuki. And today, one of our lucky winners from Nanyuki will get a chance to walk away with a, uh, a laundry, I mean, sorry, gosh, a vegetable and fruit basket from Good Fortune Greens. We have JC Beauty who is offering natural hair and beauty products. I am so excited that she launched her own brand. And oh my God, if you see those bottles, oh dear Lord. And then we have Wild International, who have offered a free Scalarizer class. Scalarizer is a flagship program developed for over 15 years, enabling entrepreneurs to identify the principles of becoming profitable business. And I'm sure Moses will teach us today because a lot of people are running businesses, but they are not profitable at all. And if you are the lucky winner tonight, you're going to walk away with a gift uh, from Wild International, who are going to give you mentorship and class. And this class is norm normally costs 25,000 and you actually gonna get it for free. So one of you will learn how to make their business uh, profitable through Get It Right with the Tara Solutions and partnership with Wild, uh, Wild International. We also have Balcon Housing, a real estate company. They are in business of buying and selling land and real estate management based in Nairobi. We also have Capricio Pastries who run a cake shop. You can check them out on Instagram at Cap Capricio underscore T underscore. Tonight, as promised, some of you, actually probably four or five of you will walk away with beautiful, beautiful giveaways and we are making Christmas count for you. This is our 24th webinar. 
We started with how to register your business legally. And last week we were discussing navigating change and uh, we called it new normal. How will you manage? If you missed any of our webinars, please visit the Atara Solutions YouTube channel to catch up and while at it, kindly subscribe and leave a comment, um, a like, a share with your friends. Uh, yes, next week we are going to be focusing on you. And I mean you, whether you're an entrepreneur or, or an employee, we are going to discuss an issue that affects all of us. So it's December, the year has been tough. We are looking at Christmas and we are wondering how do we do this? How do we manage our emotions? So on Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., we are going to be handling emotional intelligence. As always, allow me to uh, remind you why Get It Right with the Tara Solutions started. And I think I'm going to do it a bit differently today now because Moses is here. Um, one of the reasons uh, this program started is because I personally am of the opinion that entrepreneurship has been over glorified and uh, employment has been demonized. Allow me to use that word. And then we need to make a difference. We need to let people know how things are actu actually are on the ground. So, and, and to, to support that, we normally have the 22% of businesses fail in the first year, 30% fail in the second year, 50% in the fifth year, and 70% don't see their 10th anniversary. And therefore, we need to do better. We need to equip uh, our entrepreneurs and our employees with knowledge that helps them uh, do better. So tonight I am honored and privileged to introduce to you our speaker of the day. His name is Mr. Moses Moravi. I think he's one of our speakers who, when I sent the, the uh, e-flyers, everyone was like, oh, you know Moses, oh Moses. So, <laughs> he is the director at Tribeca Business Solutions. I was gonna read a lot about Moses, but I'm gonna tell you this. He's been in business for 27 years. So with that, I think I'm done. Uh, we invite you, our audience, to ask as many questions as possible so that Moses can answer as many as he can. And so, uh, Moses, how are you? just for my out of curiosity, sure. how many times have you had to start over? Um, let's just say um, with Tribeca, this is my ninth iteration. So. Um, it's not so much starting over as changing. So the same things, can you hear me clearly? I'm just pulling out where my mic is. Yeah, that's my mic. Um, starting over as in crashing and burning, four times. Literally closed shop and started something new, four times. Wow. Completely new, wow. completely wow. new, four times. I'm, I'm asking that because a friend of mine has just closed shop last week. Uh -huh. And uh, he's not in a very good space. Oh, Grace, I hope he's on here. Um, whoever that guy is. I said a friend of mine, he is not, so I assume he's a guy. Um, the, let me tell you, the most important part of this conversation is it gets a lot darker before it becomes lighter. That's the truth. Everybody will tell you, oh, it'll be fine. It won't. It's very dark sometimes. Yeah. But for sure, there are lessons you need to learn. But you can't learn them when you're hurting. Everybody will tell you stuff. It's like going to, when you lose a family member in a funeral or on the day of your wedding. On those two days, there's so many emotions you can't hear. Yeah. But after you come through the pain, because it's painful, it's embarrassing, you have to swallow your pride. Sometimes you've got to go back to people who you, you sold your dream to and explain to them why they're not going to get the returns they expected. Mm -hmm. Others will call you up who are jealous of you, and they'll be pointing the finger at you. Um, if you've got school-going children, um, and you're a very successful person, and you crash and burn, and by that, I mean the likes of the Nakumat people, for example. Some people who were very high up in the Nakumat chain of command mm -hmm. have had to go and explain to their family and friends why they are jobless. And some people used to look up to them in the village for a lot of entrepreneurship support and mm -hmm. ideas. You've got to put your tail between your legs mm -hmm. and hold your head up high at the same time, which is yeah. sometimes a lot of emotions to deal with. But it does get better. But, mm -hmm. And there are some lessons to learn. And when you learn them, and I'm giving a, another example of Nakumat, uh, quite a few of the managers who used to work at Nakumat got to back together, mm -hmm. got together, and they talked to their chamas, talked to their families, and they yeah. started supermarkets. Others used the knowledge they had from the supermarket business, and mm -hmm. they started schools. I know one who did. Mm -hmm. And they started uh, car washes, plural, not one. Mm -hmm. And they started, um, another one started a um, delivery business. 
mm -hmm. um, as in parcels, because yeah. they learned how businesses are built. But more importantly, yeah. they have lessons which are transferable. But right now in the pain you're in, wherever you are, mm -hmm. those are not the kind of things you want to hear. I can tell you it gets darker, mm -hmm. but once you face the music, there is hope in just getting through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell you. I've done it four times and I'm sure I'll do it again before I'm 100. <laughs> I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere unless God decides. So I, I plan I plan the long term. If I die tomorrow, my plans are clear to my wife. Share mm -hmm. with a partner who you trust. It doesn't have to be a wife, but yeah. it, it's better if it is. Um, it could be a business partner. Um, yeah. um, it could be a child. I've got a 7 and 11-year-old child, ch children, and I started taking them to site at the age of two and a half. I've got a project I did and a picture I took and a video. Nowadays, they've got videos. So you yeah. can remind them. My father started taking me to Nguma when they were building Nguma Estate. He's one of the developers who built Nguma Estate. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to tell a good stone, quarry stone from a bad one with a tindo. You learn the sound it makes. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was important until I needed to do it when I went into property development after my father had passed away. So again, just share your plans with people mm -hmm. um, and don't be scared. Uh, people say, uh, you'll jinx it if you, you won't jinx it. Speak, speak into your future and believe mm -hmm. it. And yeah. entrepreneurship is now a straight line. Guys will throw you curveballs. Life will throw you curveballs. I say entrepreneurship is like marriage or it's like having children. Mm -hmm. There's no, there no manual. There isn't. Yeah. You learn yeah. it as you live it. But so is life. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. tell your friend to hang in there. Excellent. Excellent. So tell us, what's your story? My story spans 27 years of um, a misunderstanding between my father and myself. Um, I, went to school, I went to college in Manchester University and then Buckingham. I, I shout out to my friends from Manchester University who are on here, my ex-schoolmates and my old schoolmates from Buckingham, George Sidondo. So um, I went to school in Manchester and um, I thought my father had sent me money for one term and he'd send me money for a year. So I squandered all the money in one term. That started my entrepreneurship because I couldn't go back to my, tell my father. Those were exchange control days, 1989. Mm -hmm. Um, 1987, sorry, 89 is when I was supposed to be graduating. Um, 87, I finished all my money in one year, uh, one year's money in, in, one, in, one, in one term. Mm -hmm. So a certain friend who is now a prominent lawyer, so I can't mention him on here, helped me to start, um, and the first Audi 80, which was bought by um, Douglas Oyugi, God bless you, wherever you are, yeah. um, helped me go into the car business. And I started selling cars from the UK. And then I realized a lot of students were like me, um, had the ability to bring a car, but they didn't have, and Kiare, don't come looking for me. It was a very many years ago. Um, <laughs> you, had the op, you had the option to bring a car, but you didn't have the ability. So I'd pay them. It started very small with a small car. I paid them a hundred pounds. The hundred pounds is what I'm getting from flipping burgers and from selling um, pizzas, pastificio in Oxford. Shout out to you if you're still mm -hmm. surviving all these years since. And um, I started working in the evenings and going to school during the day. Those days, uh, Kenyans were allowed to work as Commonwealth students for two years. Mm -hmm. So um, I used the hours I was allowed to work to earn some little money, which I then flipped into cars. Um, that's the first time I crashed and burnt because I got to about uh, five cars a year. Then I mm -hmm. trusted somebody with the money and I sent it to them. Mm -hmm. And they overused some of the people's passports and I got in trouble with immigration. Wow. And I actually missed my finals in Manchester and I had to transfer my credits to Buckingham. I finished, I graduated and I got my honors in Buckingham, but mm -hmm. um, I learned always follow procedure. What saved me is I used to follow the paperwork. So whoever had overused the passports, instead of bringing one car they used, they brought two, they were busted. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, I cleared my name and I went down to zero. It cost me time. It cost me the embarrassment of not graduating. In fact, my younger brother graduated ahead of me. He was mm -hmm. two years behind me and he graduated six months ahead of me. Um, and that was the first time I learned, keep your paperwork. First mm -hmm. lesson, keep your paperwork. By the way, it doesn't matter if it's 10 years, keep your paperwork mm -hmm. and yeah. um, keep it clean. Um, don't cut corners, guys, they catch up with you. It's, it's a hard lesson, but I learned it. Um, fast forward to coming back to Kenya because my father was ill. Mm -hmm. He was a very successful businessman in his, in his heyday, but um, he was one of the founder members just after Uncle John Keane. He was one of the DP founders, first uh, origin in 10. And um, he backed um, what people thought was a loser, but mm -hmm. he died 
uh, just a few months before um, the, the ex-president Kibaki got into power. And um, luckily, I had already come home because things were very, very tight when people who went into the opposition those days when opposition was a new thing, um, their, their, their businesses were decimated. He had a lot of property abroad he had to sell. He had um, businesses here which, whose, whose uh, accounts were recalled, um, loans were recalled, and um, he spiraled. We were left with 700 plus million worth of debt. Um, so, um, and when he died, he said, look, one thing you can't do, and I, he said, I'll, I'll give you a lot of debt. You, I want to see how, what you guys are made of. And um, those days, guys used to borrow with a lot of um, assets rather than cash flow. So we, had a, we were asset rich, but cash poor. And when I mean cash poor, we were negative 700 plus million. It took us six years to crawl out of that, and it really humbled me. And um, I'm glad to say if my wife is watching, she said um, she saw me grow up. Um, because all of a sudden, this playboy guy who was tuning high and feeling all important had to get down and dirty and start from scratch. And she said, hey, this guy grew up in front of her eyes. Or I paraphrase. Of course, I'm making it sound sweeter. She told me more like, you finally grew up. So I took you seriously. Uh, Kenya Power is doing its thing. OK, generators kicked in. Um, so um, that was the second time I learned that things around me could go down to zero and then negative. But the second lesson I learned from that, Grace, was get to know your banker. People say, get to know your priest. I say, get to know your banker. Get to know your lawyer. James Singh, shout out to you. He saved us from a very deep hole. Um, Linda James and Andrew uh, advocates. That time he was at HHM. And then he branched out in his own as Singh et al. Um, they helped us organize um, our portfolios. They helped us streamline our accounts. They helped us deal with the carry of then. But more importantly, they helped us talk to banks. And then President Kibaki came into power and we got an audience with him. So the third thing I'm gonna say is reach out. Be humble, but reach out. Don't hide. Men are all about kifua. Everything is fine. Uh, me when things are thick, my friends will tell you. Um, a lot of people enjoy me. Mozi, you don't grow old. I say me, I don't grow old because I've got a wife who listens and she loves me and takes care of business. Those who are listening know what I'm saying. And um, more importantly, she, she listens to me when I cry quietly in the night. Because guys, you need to shed and shared with the person you trust. It might be a man friend. And by the way, some people don't cry tears, but in sharing, it's like you're opening up yourself. Um, don't be Mr. Macho. Lesson number four, don't be Mr. Macho. You don't know it all. Men, how we don't like asking for directions to drive, ah, people call me a chick. Me ask for directions all the time. And in asking, people tell you things which you realize, oh, you're not alone. That's number one. Number two, somebody will come and tell you something you didn't understand is obvious to them and is not obvious to you, even a watchman in your business. So talk to your people, your teams, honestly. If things are thick, tell them. If things are good, share with them. So lesson number five for me, and I learned this, um, and I'll tell you why, um, because I decided to go into property development because um, a company I was working with, which was quite well known in property development, refused me to get involved um, at a more senior level. So. Um, I then left the company, which we had an interest in, um, because it was stable enough. We got them approved, um, ISO certified, and so on. And I branched out into property development. And I decided to tell them, like I was told by a bank manager, you've got all these debts you're trying to pay, and you're saying you're a property, you're a property developer. I said, yes, I'm a property developer, because I believe I will provide property for people. He said, belief is not enough. You've got to do it. And that day I swore. I will come back to this bank. It was KCB. I will come back to KCB and I will borrow 10 million shillings. I've since borrowed 400 plus million, paid back 700 plus million in my Oyster Village project um, in Donholm. And KCB knows we provided solutions for people when Swazuri and um, Mama Rainbow were in court discussing who should sign titles. And we found a solution that worked with KCB, with KCB. Now, I'm not plugging KCB because we've also worked with HF, Frank Ray when he was a boss there. We've worked with INM, very successful project, um, Fair Acres and Karen. But KCB, we learned each other because when my father had debts, they helped me pay. They gave me time to pay them. But I, I went there naked, swallowed my pride, and I told them, um, um, this is what is the problem. And uh, Martin Udwar, God bless you, wherever you are. Um, he sat me down and said, Moses, 
we've been fighting with your father all these years. I wish we knew this is what he was dealing with. Because I told them the politics, but I told them the business. And the question banks will always ask you, so what do you want us to help you with? Because banks are in the business of selling money, not misery. But you've got to be, guys tell you it's only business, it's not business. I keep telling guys, make it personal. So Martin, of course, me, I'm one of those guys who say, I went to Alliance. Martin also went to Alliance, but that was not the conversation in that room. I talked to him as somebody who would like business people to succeed. And we've got all these RMs these days. Those days there were no RMs and I don't know. What they had was you deal with your branch manager. And he got me an audience with Mr. Dwar and the, the rest is history because he gave me time to sell a property um, to um, Samaki Industries, God bless them, wherever they are. And we were able then to pay off the banks and we paid every cent, but we negotiated. And we, so during this time of COVID, guys, don't be scared to negotiate. Um, and if you have to sell, you sell. Um, I've had to sell my wife's house to pay off a debt. I went nicely, and you, here I say my wife's house. Eh? I went, I sat down with her and explained to her why, because of our reputation, and she said sell. We sold and we paid the debt. That's, that was actually in, um, sinking number four, which is only what, about five, six years ago. We sold the house and we took two steps back. And we came back stronger and the rest is history. So yes, 27 years, I've sold medical equipment. Uh, I was the agent for GE MacMed in East and Central Africa. Um, all, the, all the beds in Coast General Hospital in the 90s were mine. Um, then I thought I was top of the world, I could sell anything. Then GE MacMed, the MacMed company was found to have put their hand in the tail. I can say that it's not a secret. There was a big hole in the pension fund and 24 million shillings of my commissions just vanished. I had just, just booked and paid a deposit for a car direct from me, direct from Singapore. I lost the deposit and I lost 24 million shillings. This is uh, 2002. So stuff happens. What I learned is take insurance and don't try and walk alone. By the way, let me tell me, there are some people who say, but I'm in this business on my own. But then you check he's with his son, he's with his son-in-law, his daughter-in-law. So long as you work with some people who can face you and tell you, with all due respect, sir, I don't agree with you because if you don't have people in the room who will not agree with you, you will grow, but you will collapse. And you might not collapse in your time, but you will leave. And when you leave, the company will just collapse. Lee Ayakoka built a company that was formidable. Um, wonderful company guys used to just say Chrysler is it. But Lee Ayakoka left and the company couldn't keep up because succession. He did not have roots. That's a case study which everybody who goes to business school learns. Um, the likes of Bill Gates left the company, in essence, in the hands of people who could run it. And look at him. It's um, um, uh, uh, Alan Musk who now says he's the second richest guy in the world, or he's being told he's the second richest guy in the world. But how long ago did Bill Gates leave the company to guys and um, to run? And it kept growing. Um, who, who is Barclays? Who's the original Barclays? Very few people who are with Absa Barclays know who those guys are. But guess what? You go and bank with them and trust them. Why? Because they were able to leave a legacy. Who's BMW? Very few people. They know Bavaria Motor Works, yes. But who's that family? Do you actually know them? No. But you'll go and spend three, four, five, eight, ten million, fifteen million shillings buying their cars because you trust in their product. So my last lesson I need to I share with you guys is sell solutions, stop selling, don't stop forcing people. I don't build houses for people to buy. I find out what they need and then we sit down. One, all of the 99 people who bought in Oyster Village, um, I know them individually because we sat down at some point with their lawyer, with their sales agent, and I found out what they needed and we created a package that worked for them. And that's why I work with KCB. KCB listens to what your problem is. And by the way, you fight, eh? Uh, we are like siblings. We fight. Um, my RM, he knows. Um, I, I'm not an easy guy to deal with when it's my money. Um, but I'm an even harder person when I'm borrowing from somebody else because I have to pay back. So in linked to that last lesson, I learned never take yourself too seriously. Life's too short. But take your customers take your product and take your solutions very seriously and borrow only when you have to. It's better you get together and share the cake with five people and you only get 20%, 25%. My shareholder, my partners in Oyster Village know this. 
I gave out 75% of the company um, and ended up with 25% and I'm the chairman CEO. But um, we then created a very successful solution because I asked them and they mentored me. So don't take yourself too seriously, but take your clients very seriously. That's it. That's Moses in a nutshell. Excellent. That, that, that is quite interesting. I, I like the way you're saying um, be humble and reach out. And um, I was going to ask you the first thing as, um, uh, about debt, but I think you've answered that by saying borrow when you have to. Do. So I think that has been answered. And um, out of curiosity, Moses, um, mm -hmm. because I've seen quite a number of people who um, say, I am quitting to go and start a business, yes. but um, I don't know how. Mm. The, the, and, and I think this is a question that a lot of people have been asking in 2020, considering that people are going through the considering people are um, yeah, exactly. So um, for startups, what 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 is the one thing they need to learn? And for startups, I mean people are starting business in their heads. Okay, now I'll, I'll, I'll give you another story that, um, that um, makes this point. In, in, in another life, I'm also the chair, executive chairman of a, a group of companies called AVLC Group. We are FinServ Group and we, we come up for solutions. We sell, excuse me, we sell bid bonds. Um, we do cross-border money transfer, money transfer. And um, we've since moved into Pesa na Pesa. Uh, Pesa Mfukoni, it's a micro lending platform. And my team, um, we told them, look, they need to form a SACO, uh, need to form a SACO, a SACO but start with being a chama. And I said, look, um, I'll, I'll back you guys 25,000. And one of my teams, God bless her, she knows who she is. I will not mention her name here. Um, she said, honestly, um, everybody calls me Mozi. Even at work, they call me Chairman or Mozi. So mm. she calls me Chairman Mozi. What can you do with 25K? I said, sorry, I'm going to match you. You put your 25,000, you're five of you, save 5K each. Over the next 10 months, 500 bob. And at the mm -hmm. end of it, I'll match you 25K. So you'll have 50K. They said, what can you do with 50,000? So as a proof that you can work with 25,000, the CEO, Andrew Kanyotu and I, we sat down, we put together a plan, and we went and, and um, hired space um, in Gong somewhere um, from a butchery. We got some nyake. We made motura, and we delivered it to the engagement party for the then MD of um, Naivas. It was very successful. It was, a, it was a Gurario or it was, anyway, he'll remember, Mongi, bless you. Mm -hmm. And his guest told him, hey, this is from Naivas. So he called his manager and said, this is from Naivas. He said, no, it's one of your guys who brought. So he found out who it was and it was a friend of my, uh, my CEO, Andrew. So he calls Andrew and says, I need that in Naivas. The rest is history. It's called Paul Mutura, Paul's Mutura. The guy was on social media. We started that company with 25K and um, he became a partner. He got one third shareholding. We stole him from Buffet Park. He used to, he was one of those guys who used to serve you at Buffet Park. Not the big shot, one of the guys serving. And we've named it Paul's Mutura. And all he wanted was a 1300. That's what he used to say, a 1300. He just wants that pickup. Um, that was now five, five, four, five years ago, I stand to be corrected. He now has three 1300 pickups. He does deliveries and um, he's one of the branded people. When you buy Mutura from the Westland shop, they do four tons a month of his meat. What? Paul's Mutura was started with 25K. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 So it's possible. Wow. Don't say, um, what can I do with? Say, what problem can you solve? By the way, we fluked it. Mm -hmm. If the boss of Naivas' daughter was not going for. So there's, there's a lot of luck. But when you see a chance, don't zuba, don't blink. You've seen a chance, strike. And strike and with run. all your might as if you're gonna win. A lot of people play one foot out, one foot in. I'm not saying in terms of resigning. Don't resign unless you can pay your bills. Don't do that. Don't resign until you can pay your bills. And by th that I mean, if you only have say 50,000 Bob and you wanna start a business and you really have had enough of your boss, then move out of the house where you're paying 10K and move to a house of 3,000 because you've got to have enough money to last this, the, the, the distance. My father told me, if you think you want to do a business, 
do the master, do the business plan. Whatever is the final solution you find, divide it by two. And if you think you're gonna get that profit within three years, double that period. If half of that profit is good enough for you in twice the time, then start that business. So anything you think you're gonna make money, especially in this generation Z, which thinks everything just comes immediately, mm -hmm. divide the amount of money you think you're gonna get by two, double the period you think it'll take to get you the money. And if that number is still good enough for you, if you can live on that, if you can live until that money comes, if you can survive until that money comes, then jump. That's what, because I learned the hard way. Oh, I came to Kenya thinking I could run the world. I knew what I was doing. I was doing commodity trading in London. Who will tell me? Who will tell me what to do? So I went and told my father, I want 10% of the money I make. He said, okay. My mother is standing behind me telling me, no, 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 take the salary, take the salary. I used to make 5K, my, my, my secretary, my secretary was making 30K. This is 1996, 97. Um, I worked for him for, I, I thought I'd, I'd be making millions. Uh, telex, those were the days of telexes. He used to do a lot of KPCU, Hazian and polypropylene bags, selling to all the coffees and, and, um, and factories and so on. It took me, what I thought would take me ah, six months. It took me four years to do my first deal. I was on 5K. I was living in River, Riverbank in an SQ. Peter, shout out to you. He knows himself, God bless him. He was the uh, operations manager at Air India. He was my landlord. I lived in that SQ. Of course, when people came, they thought I was living in the main house. I was in the SQ. And when my wife found me, I just moved up <laughs> from the SQ. So, Fake it um, till you make it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What? Fake it till you make it. Live it. But don't lie about what you're doing. Just make sure you live like you have it already. Believe in it enough to live like you have it. So, and you guys, man, you're blessed. You've got Uber. I mean, you're called for a meeting. You just call friends and tell you guys, Sambaza, me, I need 180 bob. I need to be walking out of that car when I, when I get to that place for that appointment. Guys see you in an Uber, they think you're being frugal. Kumbe, man, you've been in mats. You're 35 and you're in a mat because you sold your car last month because you, your children need school fees or you need to invest in your business. So be it. But you walk into that meeting room, eh? You're closing the deal. It's not about how you got there. It's what you do when you get in the, off, in the room. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I know we are going to, we are about to start taking the questions from the audience and our audience yeah. today, we have excellent giveaways for you. So keep it locked. And the question, the last question for me, Moses, I sure. had a conversation with a friend of mine who has started a business in Mombasa mm -hmm. and her, her cry was, how do you close sales? Now, when it comes to closing sales, I'm taking off my glasses because I can see some questions flashing on my, and I've got graduated glasses, so I have to keep on looking up and down. It looks funny. Um, when it comes to closing sales, I, I, I used to do this as a, I also worked for the unemployment office in the UK. It was mm -hmm. legal. And I used to work for the long-term unemployed because we went for a training. It's called Becoming Your CV. And in Becoming Your CV, what we were taught is mm -hmm. that you've got to realize that you've got something to offer. So for people who are long-term unemployed, um, you've got to learn that one, even if you are taking care of children, you've learned how to multitask. So that's a skill. So that's what you're selling. Now I'm giving that as a very ridiculous example, because when you walk into a room to sell me, for example, during the pandemic, now we've pivoted into solar. We provide solar, as I mentioned earlier, when we were talking of, of, of this, um, and it's a solar conversation I've had for the last seven years because we were putting solar hot water geysers on our houses, then I realized we need to put them on rental units. And now we're gonna launch the first um, piped gas prepaid with um, solar um, power in Kangware bed sitters. Um, and we should be launching that product uh, in the, we should be breaking ground on that product in the second half of next year. Now, why am I saying that? It's because when I got into the room with who I didn't realize at the time was the owner of the company, he asked me, why should we work with you in Kenya? Because we are now the East African agents. They're called Miko AG, www.miko.net, M-E-E-C-O.net. Go and check them out. They are formidable. They're one of the biggest off-grid solar and on-grid solar um, providers in Germany. And um, what did I do when I got into that room? I showed them what I want to do that will mm -hmm. add value to my homeowners and then to my renters. Now, because I'm going into the rental space. And he said, Moses, if you promise to do what you've just said, 
that solution is what we want our solar to be used for, we'll back you. So we've got a deal where they, I come up with 25% and they come up with 75% of the cost. Then I pay them, just like Kenya Power, about, you know, they, they cut from your, from your monthly bill and then they help you the last mile and they put a transformer. Mm -hmm. Same, similar deal. So that it's now more cost effective for me as a developer to do that. And this deal is open to any developer. If you've got a development or you've got a, and you need solar power and case, uh, Kenya power, I'm sorry. It's just, it's a solution that's working for people. And it's not just in Kenya. It's in Zambia. It's in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe without foreign exchange. It's in Ghana. Um, it's in Antigua. It's in Mauritius. They're doing a very big uh, uh, project in Mauritius. Why am I saying this? Because you asked me about sales. You go into a room, and if you're going to close the sale, make sure you've done your homework about what those guys require. Mm -hmm. Don't sell them your product. Explain mm -hmm. how your product is the solution to their problem. If you can't make your product the solution to your problem, please don't take that meeting. You're wasting your time. Because they'll wait and keep on listening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At, what point, at what point are we going to benefit from this thing? And that applies. Closing the sale could be closing the sale about you. Oh, by the way, the friend in Mombasa, if you can't sell yourself, don't sell your product. Don't sell your solution. So the same way I tell anybody who's coming to an interview in one of my companies or any company, make sure you read up on the company and find out how the skills you have, not your experience. Don't come and tell me you used to be a general manager at Barclays Bank. Yeah, so how does that help me sell solar? Don't tell me you used to be a quantity surveyor for um, the government. I want to know whether you are solving problems for the government. Then we can have a conversation about how I can work with you. So if you're not solving a problem for the person whose deal you're trying to close, you're wasting his and your time. That's my answer. Excellent, excellent, wow. I am loving, loving this conversation. Moses is <coughs> saying, keep your paperwork in check. Do not cut corners. He's also saying, get to know your banker and your lawyer and have a good relationship with them. Be humble and reach out to your people. And then do, um, uh, do not pretend to be a know-it-all. You do yep. not know everything. Please keep Absolutely. learning. Yep. Um, he says, talk honestly to your teams. I mean, 2020 has been tough. If you have a staff, please explain to them what is, uh, honestly, what is happening with your business. If you're not able to pay their salaries, if you're, unable, if you're not able to sustain all of them, please be honest about it. And then leave a legacy. Strive to have a legacy. And then uh, in term, it matters debt, uh, borrow only when you have to. My Lord, yeah. and, the, and the, uh, the kicker, swallow your pride. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I am loving this conversation. So um, on to the questions with the audience. Uh, Liz Amolo asked, hi, Moses, which strategy did you use to recover from this negative debt of 7 million, 700 million uh, shillings? I love the story. It's quite inspiring. So... Oh, so the 700 million story. Um, the strategy was to be honest with my banker. Um, I've mentioned Martin Odor at KCB. Um, he, was, he was then the CEO. And um, I went there naked, literally. I mean, I went, I told him, look, this is how it is. Um, this is and I didn't go, I was from Alliance. By the way, he was finding out later. Oh, that's an, an, a, don't do that. Don't, who you, what, what, what school you went to is not important at that time. It's what will you benefit the bank? So he asked me, so, okay. Tell me, what's the benefit to the bank? I said, reputation. You guys, we've just lost our father. You won't look bad coming to hound half orphans. Number two, my father had been with the bank from before it was called KCB. It was called Gridley's Bank before, and then it became not. So he used to be with the bank from long before. I said, we are a long-standing long customer who went on hard times. I'm not coming to do boo hoo here, but this is the proposal. Number one, um, we owned a hotel. It's called Golden Beach and Diani. Um, and we'd fallen on hard times. We want to sell it. So please give me time. He said, how much time? I asked him for three years. He gave me six months. We settled it a year. Number two, um, uh, we, we then uh, convinced them that we had a plan. They asked, how do you think you'll sell it and your father had not sold it? I mean, you're a young guy. Your father had a lot of experience. I said, unlike my father, I am not tied to the asset. So I'm looking at the value of the asset rather than the value of the business. I want to stop the hemorrhage. He saw that we had a plan. And then I told him the kind of people I had linked up with. I had um, bankers who he knew. I had um, my, my uncle John Matthew, uh, my uncle Matthew, um, who was then, who, who were then the, um, the, he was seconded to Consolidated Bank. 
but he's an ex-KCB guy. Um, and um, I had mentors who could stand by me, um, Mr. Gedongori, Stanley Gedongori, ex-MP. Um, those were some of the mentors who I could reach out to. Uh, God bless him, my deceased Uncle Karume. Um, and he's an uncle by friendship, not by, not by blood. These were my father's friends. And these are the people who I said, these are the mentors who advised me. And they said, come and put my case to the bank. Now, if you don't have mentors like that, you put your case to the bank. This is what I plan to do. I was blessed that my father had friends like that who I could mention. As, of course, the bank first says, why don't they come in and see Mamiya you? I mean, Mr. Karuma is very rich. Why does he do that? I said, because that's not how my father worked. So I can't claim the same. He's my uncle who's mentored me enough to tell me to face up to the truth. Sell what you can and manage what is left. So the lesson I learned um, from Omolo is bite the bullet, stop the ship sinking first. Stop trying to row, row, row. Don't live a fantasy life. Remember, that's Moses, Moses Moravian and SQ, and his father owns what was a hotel that we sold for a, um, a, a pricely sum. But we flipped it, paid off all our debts first, and then got our assets back. From that conversation, now we had to pay KRA. It took us another seven years. So make sure you're ready to put in the time, but ask people who know better than you. It, by the way, it doesn't matter if it's your uncle, if it's your family friend, if it's your banker. We even had um, Bishop John Jenga from the Catholic Church, also deceased. I went to, for him for advice. Um, I went to him for advice and he put me through to parishioners in Consolata here on um, Waiakewe who I didn't know, but who knew my father. Mm -hmm. You see, priest, lawyer, banker. Thank you, Moses. I think uh, because we are running short of time and we have about quite a number of questions. Okay. Um, so let's keep the answers a bit short and uh, two points, which I'm sure is a hard uh, whatever, but. <laughs> I wanna give examples right. so that guys know I, I mean it when I say it. It's not theory, but yes. um, I will be brief. And then what I'll do is Grace, I'll give you my email address and yes. tell them to send or tell them, send them to you and you can mm -hmm. forward them all to me. And I promise I'll, I'll answer them. I'll answer them one at a time. If you, in fact, if they give me their WhatsApp numbers, I will, I will videotape a WhatsApp reply to each one of them, or we can do it to you. You choose how you do it. Use technology. Excellent. No problem. We can organize for that. And, I, and I'm liking that because Monica Mukeangi is saying this is very authentic. Oh, so, bless you, Monica. Yeah. Um, an anonymous attendee is asking, when do you expect real estate in Kenya to bounce back? Three years. Okay. You Monica want a brief Karant. answer? Yeah. Uh, not too brief, though. Make it interesting. Okay. <laughs> you want the reason why? Yeah. It, it's because um, uh, Monica, uh, anonymous. Um, three years because we, we, we've got all this um, BBI conversation going around on the back end of COVID, uh, on the back end of a lot of people losing jobs. So, um, and a lot of uh, investors also holding back their money until they see how all this is going to settle. So that's causing a lot of um, concern. Then a lot of the money coming from diaspora um, that used to go into the real estate business is going to sustain people who are jobless, who are... So the money that investors abroad, you'll still see diaspora money coming in, but instead of it going into speculative investments, now it's going to sustain families. I mean, families, and don't, don't forget, those guys are also losing their jobs. So they're sending whatever little they can to their families at home, but it's for sustenance as opposed to investment. Mm -hmm. Then soon after that, we're gonna have um, the elections. It's a standard thing. The elections, going into the elections, any seasoned developer will always hold because the buyers don't come through until they see what happens. And it takes about between eight to 18 months after elections, total three years. Uh -huh. Thank you for breaking that down. Um, from Monica Karanja, this idea of providing a solution vis-a-vis -vis entrepreneurship, does it have yes. to be a new idea? I am more of a doer or get tasks done than, a new, than an innovator. Yes. Um, Monica, you said? Yeah, Monica, Monica Karanja. Uh, Hi, Monica Karanja. Um, no, it doesn't have to be um, a new thing. You just do the same thing better than other people. Um, Has Consult uh, are, are a family who I really admire. Um, there was already the other, all the other big names you can imagine in the industry. They came in into the industry, they kept it within the family, and they provided a solution that everybody else has had to envy because it worked. And, and Has Consult is one of the companies which I, whose reports I quote when I'm talking to international people looking for money for my projects. Because that family, they got it right. They did what other people were doing, but did it better. Okay, okay. And I'm not, I'm not scared of quoting my competitors. 
We don't compete. They are not my competitors. They are, they are seasoned developers in their own right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, plus, healthy competition is always allowed. Um, Absolutely. It, it just makes us better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Monique, Monique Mokayang is saying, I would like to know more about solar solutions. I will send you Moses' uh, contact as I send the email <coughs> after this. And uh, I will share their, their profile and, and um, their contacts so that you can reach sure. out to him. I think no even problem. Idel Sakwa is saying, this is so insightful. I wish I could meet you for more business advice. I have failed severally, but want to get it right this time. So even you, Idel, I'll share. I hope you don't mind uh, becoming a mentor to somebody. So uh, I, I used to say yes, but my wife started cutting my legs when I was doing nine, nine chamas at a go because I used to do it. I used to do it for money. Then I started doing it for free because I, I met somebody who told me, everybody who mentored you, you're responsible to mentor others. But um, what I do is I, I, I will gladly, I will gladly share. Let's get in touch. I'll gladly share. Um, Answer these, questions, maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, absolutely. Um, in yeah. Kenya, Miko and ourselves work with a company called Plexus Energy Solutions. Plexus Energy is um, headed by Edward Kenyanjui. And um, he's another guy who, he just finds ways to make it affordable for people to do what needs to be done. So you just go to Plexus Energy, um, Plexus.com. Plexus will see it could okay or Plexus Energy. I'll, I'll have to check. I should know that by now. I'm sorry, Edward, wherever you are, I'm sorry. But um, I'll, I'll, share those, I'll share those links through Grace. And um, solutions will come because we find what your challenge is. It could be financial. By the way, I'm ready to put up, I'm ready to help people without money to find a solar solution. That's how much I want to grow this business. Because not having money and you're paying your power bill means you're able to pay. It's just I don't have money right now. So I don't know where that 35,000 is gonna to come to come from, but I pay my 6K every month. So we find a solution, that, that's the kind of conversation. So I hope that helps answer that question, but I, I can answer that in more detail later. Okay, all right. Sawa, so, sawa, so, thank you very much, Moses. Um, so um, it's 8.50 PM and I would like to announce some of our winners for this evening as we continue with this very, very interesting <laughs> and insightful conversation. So, um, Rofens Mkamburi, you are our winner because guess what you just did? You made about two or three comments on our YouTube channel and we are encouraging people to listen to the previous conversations because we need to tell the story differently. Your entrepreneurship and employment journey has got to be different. You've got to do things better this time. Absolutely. So uh, Rofens Mkamburi, you get to win um, a gift hamper from Pal Radio. So get in touch with me. I can direct you to Pal Radio for pickup. And finally, after how many weeks? Seven weeks of having a, announcing a giveaway from JC Beauty, we finally have a winner who is Natalie Natalie Kazungu. Sorry, Natalie Kazungu again was I she just learned about our program and she went on YouTube and we have had an engagement for the last couple of days. So Natalie Kazungu, you get a chance to walk away with, um, I mean, you are our lucky winner of the gift hamper from JC Beauty. So get in touch with me and we can organize for pickup. Now, for the other two giveaways this evening, I would like anyone from Nanyuki kindly lift up your hand uh, anyone from Nanyuki, lift up your hand. Eric will watch out and we are going to um, announce the winner. And then the next giveaway is from Wild International. Wild is W-Y-L-D-E. By the way, you know Joram Munamo. Moses. Yes, I do know Joram, by the way. Excellent trainer. He knows yes. how to make guys work better. He's, he's an excellent trainer. Excellent. Yes. So Joram Munamo has given us the a scalarizer class for free. So if you are an entrepreneur who has been in business for the last three years, please lift up your hand because the scalarizer class giveaway is yours. So Eric is checking, looking out for the people from Nanyuki. So just lift up your hand if you're from I've Nanyuki. I've got relatives in Nanyuki. Can I represent? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know your relatives have cabbages. Anyway. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's very good yeah. training from Joram. They should, they, should, they should go for it. That's excellent. Yeah, so any entrepreneur who's looking to make their business more profitable, please lift up your hand and we are going to give you this program from uh, Wild International, which is a scalarizer program. So, and then uh, the people from Nanyuki, you get um, uh, a good, uh, grocery and fruit hamper from Good Fortune Greens. Hey, today we are generous. 
back to Christmas. <laughs> I mean, done with Christmas. Let's go back to business now. Ah, uh, and Natasha is saying, shout out to Mozi's wife. Spousal support is really key. It is. She should know. Yeah. She supports yeah. her spouse very strongly. Yeah. She's another entrepreneur. You should on, have her on here. She she's done. She, she's now going to do something which is another pivot which amazed me. She she owned a restaurant. They had to close down because of COVID, and she went and started doing. They call them dark kitchens or something where they cook and then do deliveries. She's mm -hmm. another one who's now doing an app and doing deliveries, and she makes wonderful. She used to make one of all my children's cakes were made by her. Um, Natasha's Kitchen or Natasha's Cake, I think it's called. And now she does all this amazing food um, and and you get delivered and you order in advance. It's amazing. Now, those are the kind of people who I want to mentor because um, it's, it's amazing what's possible. Oh, and she's one of the ones who can mentor um, people who want to switch careers. She's an ex-banker, ex-marketing person. Excellent. And now she is Excellent. making Excellent. money in a virtual kitchen. Can you imagine Excellent. virtual kitchens? It's Excellent. amazing. Excellent. Yeah. Please uh, share with me her contact for 2021. So I let's will. take an, a couple of questions. Um, sure. Some karaoke is asking, already started a business, but I have not secured an office I'm yes. on online marketing and advertisement. Yes. It's now a month and I only got three inquiries and one successful delivery, I'm assuming. Am I on the right track? Sam, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. We don't have too much time to talk about this, but stay virtual as long as you can. Um, you've got one successful deal in a month. I need us to talk. I think uh, you and I are people who can do business together. Get in touch. You're on the right track. Don't stop. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And Zisa is asking, how do you find uh, and work with a mentor, someone who can walk you through the entrepreneurship journey? Um, by the way, mentors are all around you. Um, I've just seen a question from Lillian about social marketing. We'll get to that. Um, but um, your mentor is anybody who you believe has got more experience in any skill that you require. So the skill you could require is how to talk to elders. You might be surprised your watchman um, mm -hmm. is a very senior person in his village. That could be a guy who can mentor you about how to talk to elders. Because convincing people who look down to you as a little child and I, I'm 54 years old, and guys say you look about 40. Now, imagine how I looked in my 30s. I looked like I was 12. I mean, I was being carded in some clubs when I was 28. I didn't have hair on my face until I was 35. I didn't shave my beard until I was 40. So that whole conversation lends itself to learning how to convince people. By the time I was 40, I'd had close to um, 25, 20, no, sorry, 15, 18 years of business experience. Um, but I looked like I had just started my first company. So you need to learn from the people who you don't expect. But just keep asking. You'll be surprised who will, who will, who will step up. Excellent, excellent. I think that's a good answer. We also have uh, different uh, coaches who are, we've had quite a number on this program of ours. And if you want their contact, we can always send Reach out you. to Grace. There you yeah. go. Yeah. You, you see, so ask your contact. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm out of curiosity, and I'm sure this is something a lot of our audience are struggling with tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Molo asked, how, hi Moses, how do you effectively run your business and work effectively without failing? Like, because you, you seem to be handling quite a number of uh, coffees. Okay, first Liz, thanks for the question. I don't do it without failing, I fail a lot. But what I do is when I fail, I get up and start again. Um, and I fail, in the simplest of ways. I'll give you an example. We were planning to do, um, we are planning to do this project in Kawangware and we had done a lot of sketches. We had done, we had done. And I bring my then um, nine-year-old daughter into the room and she asked, dad, where's the playground? That's a failure of my mm -hmm. tall design team. And we had to redesign the roof to be flat because we we're gonna be putting the playgrounds on the roof. Now, what does that mean? Um, you've got to be ready to listen to people you don't expect to challenge you. So um, I do it by working with people and listening. I listen a lot. By the way, I talk a lot, but I try to talk at half the speed at which I listen. Okay, you're done. I work through people, that's fine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay we have uh, quite a number of people saying, Moses, have you sort of mentorship program for the young people? Um, someone else is asking, I want to start a business and still have no idea which one to start. Jacqueline Ouma, I am going to send you back to our YouTube channel 
I think it was the second episode we had. Yes. Actually, yes. you should follow the first and second episode. The first one was how to legally register a business, how to package it in terms of branding, and how to communicate. Then the next one was how do I know which business to start? So, that was a good one. That's, you asked me it was my favorite. You asked me it yes. was your favorite. That yes. was the one. Yes, yes. So Jacqueline Ouma, go to our YouTube channel and that question uh, will be answered there. And David Moradi is saying, I love Nanyuki. Does that count? No, David. Kwanzaa, David Moradi is your brother. No, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> These kikuyus. These kikuyus. You know. So, and he's also commenting and saying, failure is part of succeeding. Yes, and and Sarah Karingi, I don't know that you know Sarah Karingi. She's co she calls herself the queen of networking. She was on she our really channel. Is. Yes, she is amazing. She wins yes. awards all over the world, and she's still not fully recognized for what she. She's an amazing woman. And Sarah, you know, I know, I know what I'm saying. She's yes. she's. You want to know a woman who can mentor you? That's a woman who gives it to you raw. She's got challenges in her own life, and yet she still shares them openly and then gives you solutions to your own issues by challenging you to come up with solutions for yourself. Sarah, God bless you, don't stop. But Excellent. you asked me a question just now, Grace. Do I mentor young people? I was yes. a train for 10 years. I intend to go back to Rotary. I'll be held accountable for that. And mm -hmm. I was a director in charge of Rotaract. I mentored quite a few people who have since become very successful business mm -hmm. people. Um, yeah. And um, I continue to keep my links. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I continue to keep my links with them. So. Yes, um, I, I do mentor them. Um, but again, um, the likes of uh, Wild International, those are the kind of people who you need to get in touch with for solutions like that. And then they will call people like us, get in touch with Grace. And I'm not pitching you, but um, get in touch with Grace. And then she'll call us. Guys, organize yourselves into groups. Call us. And we are, we are beholden to you guys. We'll come and talk to you guys as groups. That way, instead of being in a room with two people speaking for 15 minutes, I would not mind speaking for three hours to 30 people. And it can be a Zoom call. Huh? I have no problem yeah, with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. For Sorry. Grace, in fact, I'll give you three hours every month for the next three months. You just oh choose each block. Just choose mm -hmm. the people. You guys enroll. I'll do three hours, three solid hours. We'll talk through one, two, but they have to give Grace in advance the problems they're having. And we'll pick the two most difficult ones. And mm -hmm. we will put together a solution and I will co-opt my friend at Wild. And together, I promise you, we will have solutions for each team. Three months, three hours, that's nine hours of free consultancy that I used to charge 25,000 shillings an hour for. And Wild probably used to charge 100,000. I mean, he's much more up there than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I, anyone who needs mentorship, I think that's something we can always organize. Um, probably um, most of our audience are in that space. So we, we will organize and have all of you come in and probably guide them and answer their questions and all that. So um, just George Moreri, I want to take your question and send it uh, uh, to uh, Moses later because it has sure. a lot of, to do with calculations and, and funding and all that. So no I problem. think your question, we are going to share it with Moses and probably you guys can uh, interact later. So on the last question of the evening is, this is so timely, kindly talk about risk. How you know a risk is worth taking as an entrepreneur? Okay, um, in, in my list of do's and don'ts, um, I, I, I said, you need to learn to trust your gut. But the problem is in order to learn to trust your gut, you've got to test it. So you need to lean into your mistakes. And then when you, this is what we do in, in every business I've gone into. And my list just gets longer and longer. We learn, we learn by asking and people who've gone ahead of us, there are some people who will shut the door in your face. You ask mm -hmm. the next guy um, and they'll tell you their, what they had to overcome and you put that as a risk. It could happen to you. Then find out how to solve that risk for yourself. It's not just insurance. It's not just getting the best in the industry. It's not just giving up shares to people who know more than you and you become shareholders with you. All those are different ways to mitigate risks because risks will always happen. Yeah. Those are now the insurance things you can put in place. But after that, crumple up all those things and throw away that list and start. You need to start because in doing, there's the learning. And when you learn, you make a few mistakes and learn yeah. from them and you improve. Then you will prosper. It's just, you've got to learn to trust your God. Okay, okay, I love that. So uh, before we announce the entrepreneur who has won the class with Wilds International, um, parting shots. Um, 
guys, it's it's not going to be easy because of this COVID stuff. Um, there are a lot of people who are suffering out there. And for some people who I even know, um, they just started their business and then the government had to shut down the economy to save lives. Mm-hmm. It gets better. Just ask for help. Excellent. Excellent. It gets better. Parting short. It does. And I, I like what Nzisa is saying. Everyone can be a mentor. And when you walk through a door, make it easier for the ones behind you. So I am really glad that we're having this conversation because this is one of the reasons we started this program is because people don't tell it as it is in entrepreneurship. And I like using the word entrepreneurship has been over glorified. Yeah. It is not as easy as people think. And that is why we are here every Tuesday to guide you, to encourage you, to make sure you're getting it right as you either start afresh or as you grow in your journey so that we make sure that whether you're an employee or you're an entrepreneur, you're doing this uh, thing properly. And John Moridi is saying, happy to help any entrepreneur that needs mentorship, uh, mental health guidance. So again, there we go. Uh, There are so many offers today. Uh, so everyone is saying great session and all. So our winner for this evening is Eric from Nanyuki. Eric, I don't know which Eric this is. I mean, Eric, sorry. Eric, who is from Nanyuki? Eric. Anyway, so um, I think I'm going to get the name and we shall announce that later. Um, so, and then the winner for the Scalarizer class is Walter Kioko. Walter congratulations, Kioko, Walter. Please. congratulations and thank you thank you for logging in and we hope that this class will change your life and change your entrepreneurship journey please get in touch with me so that i can hook you up with joram who is uh, uh of wild international congratulations rofens mkamburi uh, who won a gift from pal radio for interacting with us on youtube natalie kazungu who has won as uh, the jc beauty gift pack oh my god you should see her bottle Anyone who is a naturalista here, oh, you're not doing your hair if you're not using Shishi Naturals <laughs> or JC Beauty. <laughs> and then we have um, somebody from Nanyuki, I don't know who, who has won the gift hamper from Good Fortune Greens. And then Walter Kyoko, who will get the Scalarizer class from Wild International. So thank you very much, Moses. That was really, really insightful. My pleasure. And I hope My we pleasure. can engage further and support our people and make uh, the business environment better and better. So this is informative session is brought to you by Atara Solutions, a HR and co- uh, training and consulting firm in partnership with the Lego Academy, a software development and capacity building academy. So thank you very much. Uh, someone else was asking about the contacts for Solar. We are going to send you Moses' contact. I, I hope he can do a presentation so that we attach to it and then share with you their profile and how you can get in touch with them so that I'll do that. you can continue I'll do that. providing your, you with solutions. So thank that. you very much, uh, Zalego Academy, our IT partners. Thank you, Serenity Studios, for the videos of the month. Thank you, Balcon Housing, Good Fortune Greens, JC Beauty, Wild International, Pal Radio, Sorel Laundry, Tanu's Kitchen, Career Management Center, Shishi Naturals for the giveaways for the last couple of weeks. Special thanks to Simon Washira of Think Out Limited, a strategy and communications company. Thank you, Alex Mwangi, our legal expert. Thank you very much, our audience, for tuning in. We wouldn't do this without you. It's always a pleasure. Do not forget to tune in to PAL Radio 96.9 FM in Nairobi. My name is Grace Ndula. I am a trainer and HR consultant with Atara Solutions. I have been your host. Please like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Atara Solutions. See you next week, same time, same place, as we look at emotional intelligence. From all of us, it's good night. Good night. Thanks, Grace. God bless.